Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today I'm doing something, well, completely unique. I've never painted this painting before. I don't know why. It's Bob Ross, number one, series one, episode one of The Joy of Painting. That's right. This is my version of Bob's very, very first ever televised broadcast. I thought this would be a fun challenge to do. Doesn't look too hard, does it? Hmm. Little did I realize that I was actually walking right into a bit of a booby trap. Bob made it look so easy, and yes, I made a big boo-boo. But you'll have to watch the whole video to see what I did wrong. Now, the other thing we're gonna try and do is shorten up the intro a little bit, so I won't be showing all the brushes one at a time and going through that little preamble. I want you to really get to the painting a little bit quicker, so I might be introducing the brushes as I'm using them, just to try and shorten down the, the intro a little bit. Anyway, less chat from me, Comfy chair time for you, and I suspect a little bit of a stronger drink necessary all the way around. Right, let's get painting. Happy painting, people. So here's my canvas. It's a 16 inch by 20 covered in grey gesso. I'm going to start this off with some Bob Ross liquid white oil paint. For ease of use, I store some in an airtight container in the freezer. These are the brushes I'm using. A couple of Bob Ross one inch landscape brushes, a liner and of course a Bob Ross palette knife. The brush I'm starting with first is this old one, it's got the little orange tip. It's one I've been using for a long time, and it's getting a bit worn, but it's perfect for putting on liquid white. I like to divide my canvas into sections, then apply a small amount to each section. Only apply a thin, even coat. To finish off my canvas, I do long flat strokes, side to side and top to bottom. This evens things out nicely. Now, here's my palette for this painting. It's actually quite limited. There are only eight colors to start with. And the first one will be cadmium yellow. Now, again, I'm using my old brush for this. It's perfect for just getting on the initial paint. I want to start out with a little patch of cadmium yellow here in the center of my sky, maybe a little left of center. Notice how I blend it out and make it a little wider than I think I need it. There. I give my brush a dry clean on some paper towel and then go straight into some thalo green. I know, it's a bold, strong color, so mix it in well into the brush and just a little hint is what we're looking for. Don't start right against the yellow, but start a little further out. I'm gonna blend these two colors in that white band on the outside of the yellow. It's an interesting sky, and one that you probably recognize. If you've seen Bob paint Robot on the Beach, you'll recognize the sky. It's exactly the same one. Now, picking up my nice one inch brush, I'm gonna blend these two together. There, just bring one into the other. Make sure you can't see where one stops and the other begins. Finish off with some long flat strokes. Now, straight into some Prussian blue, up here in the corners. Just a touch, some here as well, and maybe some down towards the horizon line. There. Once again, I'll blend them well and then switch to my nice brush just to finish off that blending process. Again, stand well back, make sure you can't see any hard marks or edges. To give my sky a little bit more of a focal point. I go into some titanium white and just a touch of cad yellow. Just a hint, mind. Load that nice one inch brush very well with color. Now, here's my focal point. I go straight in with my brush and put a dab of paint and then start working my way round. Now, in Bob's original painting, he didn't do this next step. He just basically just blended it out. But I'm just doing that sort of starburst pattern, like rays of light. I tap and work out to create sort of spokes. It's an interesting effect, but one that's so easy to do. Finish it off with a few flat, soft brush strokes. Let's mix ourselves a nice lavender colour. I'm going to use some Prussian blue and some alizarin crimson. And 
this is where my painting all went wrong. Can you see the mistake I'm making? Yes, it's obvious, isn't it? Well, I didn't realise at the time, but let's see how this painting develops. I use my old one inch brush and go into that dark purple colour and just tap on some nice leafy bushy shapes. I put on some Van Dyke Brown for some tree trunks and then start highlighting. But something's not quite right. The more I paint, the more I realise my mistake. I go back and look at Bob's original video and there it is. I should have brush mixed my lavender. Bob's painting was a subtle blend of lavender shades. Whereas my colour was one dark shade of purple, I convinced myself that I had to use it because, well, I'd made it for this painting. So here's my painting so far, and it's not what I usually say at this stage. It's usually something like, My mouth is coming on rather well. Or, So I'm really happy with my painting. But today it's, well, I messed up. It happens. I've doing this really so just to sort of show to you that you know no matter how many paintings you do and how many times you practice things you can still get things wrong I get things wrong all the time so don't feel disheartened if a painting doesn't work out dust yourself off set yourself up another canvas and try again but don't waste what you've done do what I did experiment with some colors you've got a palette with paint on it so use it test your paintings and use them to avoid making the same mistakes again. Anyway, this one's going to go on the Hall of Shame. You know that scene at the end of Indiana Jones where they're walking down the long rows of sort of boxes and things and secrets to be hidden? I've got a box down there somewhere and that's where all my paintings go. <laughs> so you won't get to see them. Yes, you do. You see them here. Anyway, let's reset. And try again but I'm going to take it from the point where I finish the background sky. Hopefully I'll make a better job of it second time around. So here we are back at the sky again. This time I'm going to brush mix my lavender and I've added a couple of extra colours just for some fun. Now here we go my old one inch brush I used it for the sky just like before but I go into a alizarin crimson first. I pull a good amount through my brush and take just a touch of Prussian blue and I blend it on the palette and check my colour as I go. This was where I went wrong the first time. I just couldn't see the colour I was making. Now, once again, let's just touch in the suggestion of a horizon line. It's good to do a little planning. You know, I love to plan things. Now, just touch in the position of the main tree, just to the right of centre. And then with just a small touch of paint my brush, I just touch in rough positions and sizes. I'm also checking my colour as I go. Anything too blue and I'll stop. Now, notice how I pull my brush one direction through the alizarin crimson, rounded side first. That's right, my brush has a certain way to be loaded and I load it the same way each time and then with the rounded side out from the center of the bushes I press and push and let the brush spread and as it does it textures my canvas and creates hundreds and hundreds of little dots of color all the time I'm checking my colors I'd rather be slightly too red than too blue and I let my paint mix with the background this is how Bob got his subtle blend of colours in the first place. And why my painting just looked dark and heavy. Now, let's add some tree trunks. Again, Van Dyke Brown, just a small roll on the edge of the palette knife and just touch the canvas. Put in the main trunk and then think about adding a few little side limbs, but don't overdo it. We'll be highlighting these trees so some of the work you're doing won't be seen. If you enjoy my videos and want to see my channel grow, don't forget to like and subscribe. Give this painting a little thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing something that you're enjoying that other people should see as well. Thank you. 
I started mixing up a marble mix of colours. Van Dyke Brown, some grubby titanium white and just a hint of cad yellow. I want a sort of a bright yellow golden colour for my highlights. Remember the light coming through the back of the tree. So I'm going to put this on the left hand side of this tree trunk. Whereas on this tree trunk, I'll add it to the right hand side, closest to the light. Let's add some highlights to this tree. My old brushes work really well, but a soft new brush is what I really need for those soft, delicate paints. The first thing you'll notice is I've added a small amount of liquid white right beside my cad yellow. This is because my cad yellow is an old tube of paint and well, it's a little bit on the stiff side. I want to thin it slightly. Top tip, take a small amount of cad yellow through the brush first before the liquid white. Otherwise the liquid white will just run and hide in your brush. Also notice how I press my brush into the paint and splay the bristles apart. I load my brush rounded side first and then when I come to the canvas, I also unload it rounded side first. This is crucial to get those lovely leafy highlights. Top tip, before you load your brush again, just gently knock off some of that paint. You'll notice I've picked up a small amount of the lavender. This will keep your highlighting colors fresh and clean. I add small amounts of color, doing one branch at a time. Save some dark. It's what gives your tree its sort of depth. There, this is looking quite nice now. Let's put a little bit of Indian yellow into my color for a little variety. Again, the Indian yellow didn't need any thinning, but I'm putting it into the cad yellow to make sure it's thin enough to stick to my lavender color. Careful notice how I groomed my brush with paint and then pressed into the canvas. Can you see my canvas bounce under the weight of my brush? It's one of the reasons why painting on a canvas is easier than painting on a canvas board. There, just a few highlights and my painting comes to life. But after a while my brush, well, it just clogs up. This is another top tip. Stop every once in a while and give your brush a nice dry clean. Time for some planning. I want to put a path in my painting just like Bob did, and some water as well. Problem is, you can't see what I scratched on the canvas, so let's use a small round brush and just sketch it in a little bit more clearly for you. So here's my path, and I was thinking about having two big puddles, but maybe one would work out better. We'll see. As Bob would say, it's your world. You have infinite power when you pick up a brush, and he was right. Now back to my lavender colour. I'm going to use some time lapse through this section because it's a lot of repetition. Again, texture your canvas. Important note here though, I'm using slightly darker lavender. I'm putting a little bit more on my brush. I leave some gaps here and there for my rocks. Notice also that I groom my brush flat. I want to use the brush on its side rather than on its edge. But again, press it into the paint a little texture going and drop in a small amount of highlighting here and there. You notice just like the trees I save a little dark that'll be important later on. I can't resist adding a few little sparklers here and there. Now a small roll of Van Dyke Brown and just block in where I think maybe there's a nice rock. Top tip use some of the background colour to highlight your rocks. I like that blue colour from the sky, so I'll leave it peeking through here and there. Now, let's have a look at this marble mix I've made for my tree trunks. I think it'll work quite well. So just a touch here and there to enhance those little touches of blue that I put on from the sky. Do a little and stand back. Think about how the light will be coming through from the background and highlighting those rocks. Light will often be reflected from the surface of rocks. It's called referred light, so you can get some nice abstract colours. 
for instance, look at that lovely lavender and purple colour I've made here. That's that brush mixing again, really comes to the fore. I think I'll increase the size of my pathway as it comes towards me. Notice how big it's become from the background to the foreground. This gives my painting a nice sense of depth and perspective. I'll even add a little bit of a bank here. Time for my old brush. I've given it a jolly good dry clean. I want a touch of that colour for reflections on the water. Again, press, push and pull straight down. Look at all those lovely colours coming out. There. Lots of pastel shades of blue and crimson. This is definitely a painting that requires a subtle touch. It's one that you should practice. I think you'll get a lot from it. Now let's add a few more highlights to the rocks along the edge of the bank. I decided a puddle wasn't quite big enough. I've made it into maybe, well, a small pond. Notice also I used some abstract colours. I like to throw in a little red now and then, even a little blue. Don't be afraid to use lots of different colours on your palette. They can really add a sense of harmony to your work. This is something else I picked up from looking at Bob's work. I was lucky enough to see some in person and I was stunned at how much colour he really used. So I encourage you all to try painting a looser style. Not quite so tight, but like that dark purple colour I started with. It was just too fixed and too regimented, wasn't it? Now, let's add a few sparklers. Remember, I didn't over highlight my background bushes because I wanted these ones to really pop out. Again, I was planning ahead a little bit. That, I just got very lucky. You decide. I want to pull down a little bit of the bank colour into the water just to enhance those reflections. For my water lines, I tap my pat knife into that grubby white paint. I don't need to be too clean and bright. And hold your knife level. Touch, press, and just let the knife slide along to leave a little impression of light. It doesn't have to be continuous, but if it's still flat water, then all your reflections and water lines must be level too. For those little tight areas, I switched to using the short cut-off blade of my knife. Now, I thought I'd finished my painting at this stage and I was keen to get some scratchy sticks and twigs in there, but, well, I did a little second look at it and thought that, well, this side here just looks a little bit open and sort of, well, empty. I need a few little rocks. I also need to fix that edge. It's a little bit sort of sharp, a bit like steps. So you know the routine. Add a little bit of a dark, sticky colour, like Van Dyke Brown. Sculpt it. Make it look really nice and rocky. And then use a few little highlights to make it really sing. The old one inch brush pulls down some nice reflections and of course a waterline. Use my one inch brush to add a few little touches of highlight on the edge of the path just to soften things up and just to get rid of that last little bit there. It just looked a bit sharp. And before you know it, you have a finished Bob Ross masterpiece of your own. A walk in the woods, a Bob Ross masterpiece from series one, episode one. So there you have it, Bob Ross, episode one, series one, the very first painting, but not this disaster, that one. I think a much nicer version, but don't move. There's some more lovely painting videos coming right along for you. Happy painting, people. So here we have it, my finished painting, but not the one I want you to see. No, I want you to see this one. It, oh, ah, I'm covered in paint now. Ah. So here it is, my finished painting, but not that one, this one. In fact, I don't want you to see... No! Wrong. And I feel like being a crash test dummy. That's what they call me.